and we are live today uh, in the underwater tribe stu- in the underwater tribe studio. And we are we live. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we have Ollie Christian with us. Uh, Ollie, world yep. famous, world famous free diving instructor. Um, Trainer. Tell us, a, tell us a little bit about yourself. You just said it yourself. I'm <laughs> not world famous, famous for being <laughs> not famous for being where I'm an athlete or so. I'm not very much into. Uh, competitive free diving but what i do is uh, i'm developing basically how free diving is being taught um, from beginner level up to to instructor level and that's what i mainly do in my school on uh, Gilier. okay so as you just say you're based in Gilier. for those listeners out there that don't really know where that is uh right next door to bali we've got three small islands called the gillies uh, quite Famous amongst, especially amongst the backpacker crowd or the drinking crowd, uh, Gilier, Gilimino, and Gilitrawangan. You're based on Gilier. So yeah, you, you, the you, you're changing the trending over there because of what we know the Gili for is more like the party islands. But yeah, free diving thing. and partying don't really match together, do they? That's exactly the thing. They are three islands and they have actually very distinct uh, characteristics, those three islands. Like what you know is, is the, the party side, the backpacker thing the backpack destination this is one of the three which is called dramangan so they have a much younger average um audience there which is also good for free diving by the way because yeah, that's they're the guys more in shape <laughs> they're, well they're, they're probably more in shape but uh they they are like adventure seekers that's a thing you do now while you're traveling like hey let's get in a free dive course so that's very good for that as well then in the middle of the three islands is meno which is still very quiet, very resorty. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you just want to hang out and read your book for two weeks, that's still the place to go. And then finally, Gilier, the one closest to uh, Lombok, I would say is right in the middle of it. Like we have more like a boutique style, family style um, groove there. But we have now restaurants on all levels. We have accommodation on all levels. So everything is still quiet. Quite chill. Yeah. So it's a chilled party. But you mm-hmm. get what you... Yeah, if you want to go party, there's mm-hmm. always one party per night. Uh, okay, so, so same like the Gilly Tea. You, the one yeah, place but has not, the party. Not out of control. Right, like I see right, it sometimes right. happening there. It's sort of like for whatever you, you like, you can find it on Gilly Air. But okay. basically, we try to keep it a bit... Now, so don't get uh, me wrong, yeah. but uh, I remember when I went to Gilly Tea, it's the only one that I've been. There was a place that made some great pizza. Do you have good pizza in Gilly Air? We have already now two places that have quite decent pizza and there's uh, another one coming up where, where we all have very high expectations because uh, it's, it's run by the same crew that already has a high-end Italian restaurant on uh, Gilier. So uh, the expectations okay. so that couldn't should be, be good. any higher. That should be good. Good. Yeah. good. Looking forward. And now you have your own school there, that's correct? Yep, I started um, the brand Free Dive Flow as a free diving brand. I started um, eight, nine years ago, but um, it took me a while to find a place where I could start a school that is open 365 days per year, so it's not affected by seasonal changes. Um, that was uh, Gilly Air. Uh, I discovered it already years ago, and I just saw like, okay, it's just a still, still a bit quiet over mm-hmm. there. So tourism was developing, and uh, three years ago I um, found a partner there that we could si- finally say, hey, uh, now mm-hmm. is the time. This is the right place. Let's do it, and uh, we couldn't be any happier to for this decision because uh, in. What is that now? Two and a half years that uh, we've been operating. We have in long? total. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we have in total. Um, I think we're up to five days now that we couldn't dive. Where we just had to uh, call in the whole day. year. Yeah, that, yeah that just in two because of weather years. or whatever. There's always need. a place where you can go because of it's so mm. diverse. Like some. Um, some bays are protected from the southerly winds, some are from the northern winds, some are protected from yes. the from the northern swell, and so on. So there's always a place to go, and it's very rare that we have to. Yeah, uh, I remember call that. It. So uh, how long ago did we meet each other? Already four years, I mean, three, yeah, four years, minimum, because you were yeah. in Bali before, based yeah. here in Bali. Yeah. And I remember we were talking about one of the main issue for you here in Bali is actually to find the right spot to do free diving, which Absolutely. we you found one which was Ahmed, it's very nice and calm and shelter all year around. But uh, other than that, uh, the other places can be hit by swell and so yeah. on. And Ahmed is already, already packed what, three or four, five. with a few schools yeah. in there. 
So then you move to the Gili and you found this excellent uh, spot yeah. for yourself, which also like uh, year round visibility should be pretty good there. So it's nice blue water. Eh? Like everywhere in the, in the tropics, it depends a bit on the season when it comes to visibility, which is not such a, a big deal in a free diving teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. The visibility can go down to 10, sometimes like for one day or so it can go down to five meters not a big deal yes so what, what is much the bigger deal is there are other factors like uh, there, there must be tourism there must be medical um, services nearby there nearby. must be nearby um, international airports you must have um, like all um, accommodation and and food uh, um, available, available yeah. on all levels and so on so there are many factors that have to uh, line up so that that you can say okay we are ready to do this all year round and it's already a, a fairly well-known destination as well for divers adventure people um, so you got a pretty built-in audience straight away yeah that helps uh, certainly a lot that the whole thing has already a name and a reputation and uh, we can mm -hmm. build up on that yeah how many free diving schools are now in the Gillies in the Gilly Air particularly where you were stationed well, schools are three, uh, as far as I can say. C, uh, because school means, uh, for me, a company that does nothing else than free diving. But okay. as you know, that free diving also becomes now a, a part of the, 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 the overall diving industry. Mm -hmm. um, so they so are you do fun dives. There are other dive operators that also offer right. free diving as fun dives or even they have instructors mm -hmm. or that one of their instructors has a free dive instructor certification. So there is sort of like an added on product in a scuba uh, operator. So okay, so growing, let yeah. me rephrase my question. How many free diving schools that uh, can organize uh, instructor training are there in the Gilear? Oh, that's just us. It's we, just, yeah, yeah. Okay. and we, that's what we focus on and specialize on. It's the, the master level training, which we do uh, on one side as, as a standardized course, be it in a PADI or AIDA. We can talk about these agencies also later. Uh, but that's basically not enough, uh, in my experience, to become a professional free diver. Mm -hmm. What you need is uh, at least one month of training, Full focus training. training, so you get ready to that level where you... Uh, as I always say, when, when you become an instructor, you um, basically change your focus completely. As a freediver, you focus only on yourself. And when you become an instructor, you focus on everybody else. Everybody but else, yeah, you. exactly. That takes time. So yeah. when you're saying like you need about a month of uh, focus training, you mean given that you're ready to a level of uh, very comfortable freediver. So you need to be a comfortable freediver. Free, 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 free diver. Yes. And then you still need a month of uh, focus training before go through an instructor training course, exactly. correct? Exactly. And the instructor After training? After you have finished your personal training, so we always say four, four, four. If you reach 40 meters comfortably, depth, four minutes static, so and a breath hold without moving, four minutes, and uh, about 100 meters diving underwater uh, horizontally with fins. When mm -hmm. you got that sorted, then you can basically say, okay, start to I'm focus a good on free others. diver, I'm, I'm solid, and now you can start focusing on other people. And how many, how long would be then the instructor course? That's then fairly short, that's 10 days. Uh, well, 10 where days. you learn how to teach and everything that else you learn before. That is the Aido or the Paddy or? Um, we don't make a difference there. The uh, Paddy could be done much shorter, but in fact, it's not possible. Right. What about, what's the difference as you were just talking about, say you've got, um, I go to a, a, a scuba diving center and I've got, oh yeah, I wanna do a free dive course. And, and some guy comes up and says, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a free diving instructor. It just could be, you know, a guy who's 10 months out of the year is teaching scuba diving, but then only teaches one or two free diving classes in a year. What's the difference between taking a, a, a free diving class with somebody like that who's just mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a part-time free diving mm -hmm. instructor and someone like yourself who, who does it as a living. Yeah. Um, let me give you a comparison. I compare free diving and scuba diving like, you know, if you want to go from A to B, you can take a car or a cool motorbike. And it depends on what's the weather, what's the road and so on. You want to maybe choose the car if it's rainy and you have a lot of stuff to transport. It's just the smart choice. 
if it's a sunny day and it's a winding road over a, uh, a hill and so on, you might want to pick the, the motorbike. And for me, free diving, scuba diving is quite similar. So what you just um, suggested is you go to a driving school where they all normally teach you to drive cars, but they're also bikies on right. the weekend yeah. and uh, they are they have the certification to teach you a mot uh, driving that motorbike they will do a fine job no question but it's gonna be maybe a bit of a difference if you go to a place where there's these are fanatics all they do is take care of their bikes and work on their technique and teaching skills and whatnot equipment and so on you can sort of expect the same difference there. gotcha okay. that makes sense so you've got I mean, they might have the theory and the, okay, this is, you know, I'll, I'll look at my book and, oh, on step two, I need to do this. Yeah, okay, so now, guys, I need you to do this, whereas you're doing it all day long and so much more yeah. um, like you know, hands-on. I would say like like in everything that you teach, the book is, is uh, important to follow the standards, but actually that's just the, the, the backbone. That's yeah. just, you know, the, the, the bones of it, but it's you as an instructor that puts the flesh on it and that's years of experience and uh, trying and failing maybe it works this way better maybe I, could, I should use these words or not that word that um, you know there's so much into it to deal with this with this very special situation I mean we put people uh, like in face to face situation with their fear of death that's what happens mm -hmm. when you go free diving yes and to to deal with that and um, it's not only it, by the book. Yeah. It, it doesn't become only a psychological feel it's not only you thinking about that uh, and that can trigger something like a panic uh, it's also a physical uh, feeling because once uh, you're holding your breath and you're building up that co2 right you start to feel it in your body like mm -hmm. the urge to mm -hmm. breathe mm -hmm. correct and mm -hmm. holding it and so uh, here it brings me to my question that i wanted to ask you next is uh, from a beginner level, so somebody that never uh, free dive, he just did snorkeling, uh, maybe it's a scuba diver or something like this, but he never been breath holding. What is, uh, once he come and join your first uh, beginner course, the first one, uh, what's the success rate that you have at your school? Mm -hmm. Like, do they all get certified or you find uh, people that they have difficulties mm -hmm. and what do they have to achieve to get the first certification? So yeah. Um, when you go f to a free dive course, um, which is performance based, which means you have to meet certain criteria, you cannot expect to pass it. That's uh, that's a fact. And I would say the overall pass rate for the three day beginner course, including depth, is maybe at sixty to seventy percent. Oh, we nev oh, we okay. never made a statistic on it. We we could do that. Um, but the point is, it's not the point, actually. Yeah. It's, it's the journey that counts. So you will definitely learn a lot about the theory of it and maybe understand also why it's okay to be scared of it in the beginning and uh, how you can deal with that. That's a, that's a lesson for life. You know, it's something to account to that is completely new to you and you learn. You can overcome that without forcing you, but by simply... Um, learning to deal with a, a new situation that scares you in the beginning. Then secondly, we have a technical uh, issue in free diving, which is equalization. Equalization mm -hmm. of your ears and sinuses when you go head first, diving down with a head down, pulling yourself down along the rope or using your fins going down perfectly vertical. Equalization is not uh, the easiest thing anymore. For some people, it simply works. They don't even know how they do right, it. It works. That's it, fine yeah. in the beginning. You Correct. don't need to know how it works, why it works. Just have fun and enjoy that you are mm -hmm. one of the lucky, uh, lucky ones. Some can be taught, like me. I, it took me four months to learn to equalize at really? first. I couldn't do it when I started free wow. diving. Mm -hmm. Even though you're coming from a scuba diving background? Um, even worse, because wow. in, in scuba diving, you think like, oh, I'm fine. I can yeah, equalize yeah. just by wiggle my jaw or right. swallowing or whatever. Because you go down slow, so, right? Yeah, and you have all an like, uh, infinite supply of air. And yeah, it's mainly also the, the body posture that makes the difference that you, when your head is up, air right. uh, yeah, 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 raise yeah. Uh, upwards. So it's oh, absolutely it's totally to different. Yeah. And yeah. that's how I do like when I scuba dive is I, I have to equalize keeping my head 
straight. So I'm in a horizontal position, but I keep my head straight. Even just looking up, like that, if I equalize looking at people descending, when I'm guiding, for instance, sometimes it can create this more effort in my ears, so yeah. definitely. Interesting. So, so you, equalization is a difficult part, for it so not everyone is uh, sometimes uh, you get that student that he can't really equalize well, the fact is we're not born with equalization we just equalize yeah. and somehow once you get on you know first time you're in a train that goes into a tunnel and you have this sudden pressure uh, change or in a car same there in a tunnel on a plane you know so everybody who is here in bali can equalize one way or the other one because way, it, yeah. you wouldn't be on a plane if you can't equalize right. you wouldn't uh, no, exactly. survive that yeah. so then to to do it head first or head down while going down quite quick free diving is quite quick that takes then a technique so that's what we do we teach skills mm -hmm. you know the first skill we teach is relaxation technique the second skill we teach is a duck dive how to properly get into vertical position and the third skill that we teach is equalization and some are easier to be learned and others like equalization can be some learn it right away and some like me they have to start the training program which we uh, provide uh, as well and over time a you learn how to do it technically and b you train your muscles that are involved mm -hmm. like there's many right. tiny yeah, muscles yeah, yeah. involved okay. in yeah, proper sure. equalization. so do you at your school you were saying that you also provide training for equalization and oh, that's uh, a very frequent thing yeah. and uh, talk, talk to us uh, about this because uh, sometimes we might even have like uh, yeah. some scuba divers that uh, they have difficulties equalizing that would be maybe a very interesting course also to go through how, how long does it take well, the basic theory is just three hours. It's not a, it's, it's not a, a long thing to learn what to do. Uh, you have to then do the, your homework. Yes. It's basically a daily training which yeah. you do. And there's three things involved in it. The first one is uh, many people, uh, especially people that come from cities and live in uh, air-conditioned environments, they have chronic infections in their uh, airways, mainly sinuses. Mm -hmm. um, they don't even know about that. They just live with them. Yeah, and it's, they don't it's know. just what it is. And when they come free diving and these pr uh, sudden pressure changes, then um, yeah, it, sh it shows fairly quickly when all of a sudden some old, dark, yeah, gooey yeah, matter yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, comes mask, from your yeah, sinuses. Nice. And you know, how long has this been sitting in your sinus? Right, yeah, yeah. So the first part of equalization training is cleansing. We use um, basically an approach of, uh, with pranayama, which is the, um, simply put, the, pre the breathing exercises uh, that come from yoga. So there are exercises which you can use on a daily basis to um, get, uh, or let's say that you don't have any old mucus sitting somewhere in your uh, right. airways or in your sinuses. Um, that is the first thing, cleansing. Secondly, um, mobilization of muscles. So there are tiny muscles involved, uh, like the soft palate. Um, some are not so tiny, but complicated to use, like the tongue. Uh, a third one is the glottis or the, the vocal cords, which you can also, we, we all can control quite well. Mm -hmm. you know, we couldn't talk, but we have to control them and use them in a different way. You use your vocal cords to yeah. help with equalization. Yeah. Interesting. We, you I do. Never heard of that. Um. <laughs> if you can om, you can already <laughs> equalize halfway. No, yeah. it's, it's a different uh, connection there, but yeah. So the third part then finally is the actual equalization technique itself, which um, is that there were manuals for that already available 10 years ago. And um, the thing is, I realized like, yep, I understand every single step in there, but I can't do it. So I had to dig a little deeper and that's what led me to part one and two. So from my uh, pranayama practice back then, I uh, had a, a mentor that uh, got me into cleansing exercises, which was a problem for me. I had chronic sinus infections without yes. even knowing. Right. And secondly, then the mobil mobilization, mobilization, that's a good, uh, good one for a Swiss to <laughs> <laughs> mobilization. Hey, we're not talking about armies here. <laughs> yeah, so making your muscle flexible, you mean? Yeah, yes. like using the, all these tiny muscles and being able to coordinate them and they are used at your will. And then it worked for me. Yeah, and that's okay. what was then the start of uh, That was the first workshop that I wrote that I... Um, published as well and it was quite a success i could see how many downloads or it was for free for a while on my server and uh, yeah that was the start when i got into creating um, education 
okay. system. Well, that was a small one for uh, for free diving. When I realized there's a lot of knowledge out there which should be compi- compiled and right. made available yep. in a way that it helps uh, free divers on their respective levels. Okay, so do you have uh, then a website where we can uh, get this manual and uh, um, thing? No, it's not, it's not publicly available anymore, but we're happy to help on uh, our website, freediveflow.com. Okay. Because now we, we uh, I realized... It's appearing here somewhere? <sighs> somewhere there. <laughs> uh, the workshop is nice as a... Th- like it's, it's, It helps you a lot once you've been coached through it. Someone has to, and we can do that yes. in a Skype session. We can check on someone... What are you exactly doing? Do you do you do the exercises right and so on? So um, that is now the, the recipe that works best. That we do uh, initial coaching um, online or at the shop. That's so cool. Then there's a sequence of exercise, exercise, exercise every day, and it can takes w- it can take weeks if not months. And we check in later again to do a success assessment. So now a person ahead of time is able to sign up for one of these online workshop one to one with an instructor and go through a session. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's what we do. That's something cool. Something yeah, new that's too. Good. Yeah, exactly. You can sit there in your home somewhere in the city and practice, <laughs> practice your breathing techniques. Yes. I'm ready to go diving, but I have equalizing <laughs> problems. Uh, okay, let's find now free dive flow and uh, do sign up for a workshop uh, equalizing from the comfort of your home ahead of your trip. There will be a lot of entertainment for the people around you because it looks very, <laughs> yeah, look very like funny idiot. when yeah. you do yeah. these exercises. What exactly are you doing? Never mind. Practicing to get on a plane. <laughs> you guys look very cool. I'm watching Absolutely. on Instagram and every time I see free diving and free divers like that, I mean, it's really like pretty neat. You have a perfect fitting suit. Uh, you have a long fins. Like Mike and I, we try a little bit to bring that uh, feeling a little bit into the uh, scuba diving community. We dive with long fins, actually, because they are a better tool. So <laughs> you, oh, much better tool. Yeah, if you know how to use them, mm-hmm. especially in a current and so on. But, uh, uh, well, tell us about uh, this. Uh, let's say, from, from uh, okay, I'm not completely an outsider because I also did my free diving courses with you and I've been free diving when I was a kid uh, and so on and uh, but uh, I think that the general perception of free diving is something like uh, wow I want to do that because it looks so cool it's gonna be so zen I'm gonna be like uh, a, gonna be a water hippie you know? Mm-hmm. First. you know you know like yeah. meditation and things uh, and but tell us a little bit about that uh, then what is the reality like once yeah. you are a free diver fun fact it's all true <laughs> it is it is but you have to work your way there so it's uh, in the beginning it, it it can be hard it can be weird it can be challenging but the goal is actually to to stay always on your as you progress in your comfort zone and take it easy step by step and uh, most likely after a beginner course of three days, you are one of these guys that, in, uh, that well, depends on your suit. <laughs> but the yeah. long fins, we provide that already. So it looks already very good on Instagram and Facebook. There you go. Because yeah. that's what it's all about, looking yes. cool. Well, you said there was um, certain performance standards that you have to do on the, on the intro course. Mm-hmm. What, what are the performance standards on an intro? That, that's a huge list. So um, everybody always uh, thinks it's just about the numbers. You know, you have to yeah, dive you must in, get a, that in a beginner all the course. How deep can you exactly. go? Exactly. How deep can I go and how deep do I have to go for yeah. to get the certification? Um, yes, there is a number on it. It depends on the agency that we teach and it's completely irrelevant. Okay. It's not about the number. It's about what we teach you, the skills step by step, one skill at the, uh, after the other. So I, I mentioned already a few, the relaxation technique, the duck dive, then comes the finning technique, body posture, head position, equalization, and so on. If you get these skills right, the numbers will come easily. Yeah, okay. So the numbers come are, along. Yeah. The, There's a the reason why you teach it like this. As, as a symptom of good free diving. It's not the goal. The goal is to learn every skill that it takes to become a comfortable yeah. and that also automatically means a safe free diver. And then you can completely forget about the numbers. And that's true for every level, up to instructor, 
it should stay like that. Yeah, just building confidence. Yeah, if you have a problem with to reach the number, it's not the number that's the problem. Somewhere in that uh, chain of skills is the problem. And our job as coaches and instructors is to find out which skill is the one that you're struggling with. Mm-hmm. So let's say if someone has a hard time going deep because he's, uh, his muscles start to hurt, but equalization is not a problem, then we, we can look into uh, mental problems or we can look at general the technique. Mostly it's simply the technique that mm. they, um, a student that, that has a hard time performing in that way. Yeah, the technique is just not smooth enough, um, clean enough, and, and that student wastes a lot of energy just to get somewhere. And of course it would exhaust me as well. So go back to the drawing board, go back to the pool, work on the technique, and all of a sudden, step by step, Kay. the depth problem disappears. Is there, um, so, would you say that uh, if I overcome these challenges that I have during a course, do I pick up and learn some skills that uh, will also help me in my day-to-day life back Absolutely. in the city? Yeah. Um, there's two things. We have more specific things that help for you uh, help you in underwater or water situations in general. So for uh, for scuba divers, for example, we see great results, and I experienced that myself when I became a free diver. My air consumption went from a 95 kilo guy, which I am, down to a little girl. Um, I, I went diving with uh, instructors that that were doing this for years, and they like 52 kilo. Um, ladies and in the end of the day uh, we had the same air consumption and it I, it mm-hmm. was surprising to me yeah, i didn't change major. anything yeah, yeah. it was just me becoming more aware of my in that case for example relaxation underwater my breathing my relaxed breathing that i allow the breathing to happen and don't control it that i use um, streamlining and uh, finning technique to to move around so efficiency on every level so i can only recommend it for every scuba diver to learn the basics of free diving to improve air consumption and comfort on the water mm-hmm. and swimming technique too absolutely yes and, and uh, let's say for uh, not from a scuba diver yeah. point of view somebody in a town uh, you know in a busy town and something mm-hmm. like this what can he learn uh, uh, or he will, will, will he or she learn some skills that will help for the day-to-day life there? There, there are immediate benefits which you can uh, tap into. So, for example, one thing that we use in the beginning, right in the beginning that we teach you, is that you have actually two sets of breathing muscles. And you, um, if you are more like in a stress situation, you use only one of these. So that's the muscles uh, around the chest, which are called uh, the, the intercostal muscles or chest breathing. So when you are stressed, you use the chest to breathe. When you um, feel stressed, when you feel like, okay, something is uh, out of order, I'm not really calm, that's the first step. Be aware of it, um, become aware of it. And that's what we do and need in free diving. That's what we teach, that you can consciously relax your mind and your body. You will feel it most in your belly. When your diaphragm, starts to tense up, uh, your breathing moves up into your chest, and that's then a self-enforcing cycle. So the tenser you get, the more nervous you get, the more yeah, nervous you are, yeah. the tenser you get, goes, and so on. Goes. And it's so it's easy to break no it balls. just by becoming aware of it. And as soon as you're aware of it, that you are tense, that your diaphragm is not working anymore, you can just as well release it, drop it. Take one deep breath. That's why there's a saying, take a deep breath huh, and mm-hmm. relax. That's exactly how it is. And it changes your whole situation. So if you are like before an interview or you are in a difficult conversation and it stresses you out, check your belly. It will be tense like concrete block. Yeah. They they also talk about that with singing. It's from your diaphragm, not from your chest. Absolutely. So can you show us? Can you do like... uh, a first uh, breathing relaxation (laughs) technique (laughs) can you show to the camera well do you have five minutes of uh, (laughs) just the first let it go like Um, no actually don't see anything you don't see no you don't you don't see the letting go you just feel it you just feel it you just feel it you can see i can well i can maybe see it that it's not working anymore it's not it's not moving anymore Uh, but actually the moment you let go so how can you feel it like to uh, exactly so you did something there i can see it when you when you are not moving your belly anymore so normally it should be i always exaggerate i exaggerate now completely so 
that was diaphragmatic hyperventilation, <laughs> not breathing. Yeah, you do it uh, really well as well. But if I got a bigger belly, so it's easier to see. Like if this gets tense, then it moves up. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. And down okay. here, it's moving actually in the opposite way. It's in the inhalation; it goes in uh -huh. instead of out. And if I can see that, so we should keep our chest it? down. No, what do you think? You don't need the chest Just for breathing. The chest is is emergency breathing when you are in panic, when you are in flight or fight mode, or you get to your limits of when you are you know doing a 400 mm -hmm. meter dash then you need your your uh, in your the muscles here right. to to breathe huh? and normally but it's just normal before going into sh kaput mode right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like <laughs> when you can't keep up anymore no. do they do uh speaking about that kind of stuff with 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 the relaxation and all that stuff you all quite often hear about meditation in conjunction with free diving yeah do you also teach meditation or that is a form of meditation that okay. we teach. Free diving um, is meditation with feedback. Gotcha. That's one of my um, The feedback lines. being, oh, there's fish down here. The feedback being like, oh my God, what am I doing here? So let me explain that maybe a bit. When you meditate and uh, if you do it in the dry, you sit on a cushion, it's, um, you know, you set your alarm clock, I'm going to meditate for 20 minutes. The question is, how much time in a row, uninterrupted minutes, were you actually in the now? So watching your mm -hmm. thoughts, being aware of yourself or being aware of your thoughts. And then your thoughts all of a sudden take you over, you drift away, and then you become aware of that and you gently bring your mind back to it. That's uh, the practice or one of the practices of meditation. Um, in, well, the question is now in those 20 minutes, what was the longest period that your mind was really there with you or you were watching your mind actually? Right, yeah, yeah. So in free diving, if you do a breath hold face down in the pool, your breath hold will be over. At that moment, your mind sort of starts to spin out of your control. Mm -hmm. When your mind starts to worry, when your mind starts to think about the the grocery list that you have to uh, do um, uh, after the session and so on. As soon as you lose the moment, you will probably come You'll up in the breathe. beginning. Yeah. Right. So that's why the meditation with feedback. Okay. So it's easy to, to say, I'm there, I'm absolutely right, yeah, now. Yeah. In free diving, it will yeah, tell yeah. you. You will know right away. Okay, yeah. interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, what about... You know, you were saying you're, you're not one of these guys that goes out and, oh, I'm trying to chase world records and all that kind of stuff. But there is a lot of that in the freediving world. Uh, a lot of competitions, you see that, you hear about, oh, yeah, this person just went to 120 mm -hmm. meters and, and uh, you know, there's all these different um, uh, skills. You know, some people do it with fins, some people do it without, some people are, are static, some people are going on the sled, all that kind of stuff. Uh, are you teaching each of those different skills or like you guys do sled work do you guys do no fins do you guys do whatever you know they, they, they have okay. all the different disciplines there is a, a clear or it's, it's actually not that clear this distinction but there is a distinction between recreational free diving and competitive or also called extreme free diving so i'm not involved in the competitive free diving per se i don't do competitions but i of course closely follow it why is that the guys and the community and the research and everything that happens in the competitive free diving this is where we uh, learn and gain uh, information and knowledge about the limits of uh, like the human capability and also then more broad what is safe practice for everybody so that's mm -hmm. where we we learn and we adapt then or my job is then to adapt and translate that into education systems right. mm -hmm. for recreational yes. free diving scale it down to the normal yeah. Uh, person yeah right. sort of translate it that what we teach from the first day on up to the instructor uh, the trainings well, that every single skill that we teach, you don't have to change that or relearn that or whatever just because you want to go deeper later in the competitive free diving. So it has a huge impact and that's why AIDA, as the Worldwide Free Diving Agency, is in a special situation because AIDA is also the only agency that has uh, competitions and world records, mm -hmm. a science team uh, which is on the side of both sides, the recreational and the competitive free diving. So together with science, um, teams we actually then adapt what we learn 
to the education system. So it's like uh, like a pyramid with a very wide base. That's the education right. system, the recreational free diving, and the middle section is the competitive free divers. There's quite a few that just choose to go beyond recreational. And then we have the top of the pyramid, the world records, uh, the guys who push the human capacity uh, to new limits, which were, you know, is mind blowing. In yeah, its own yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You read some of these numbers, it's like so we get whoa. that feedback, and we can uh, we can uh, improve on a yearly basis how we teach at the basis. But to make uh, one um, distinction clear, recreational free diving, you never deal with hypoxia. You should never be in a hypoxic state, mm -hmm. which means you should never get yourself into trouble. That's right. a definition. You shouldn't be passing out. Yeah. yeah. If that happens, something went terribly wrong right. or you mm -hmm. didn't know what you're doing or whatever, it's unacceptable to happen there. It's also not acceptable, in my opinion, in the competitive free diving. But as you push your limits yeah. um, and even new world capacity, record, uh, yeah, you w we still don't know. Maybe how deep it's we part can of go. it. On the other hand, we saw free divers, um, uh, world class free divers like Guillaume Neri. Once he realized that that it is push, uh, possible to push your limits, and he pushed human limits as world record holder, and for the last. I don't know the exact number, 15 years of his career, he never had a blackout, never got hurt until an accident that was not his fault. Uh, so it is absolutely possible also on top level. Maybe there's a, there are individual differences between athletes and um, how far they push themselves to their person limits, but well, he proved it's a it's human uh, case. So based on human case, and even if we are all uh, pretty much the same, uh, we are also different so yeah, but it's a it's, it's a philosophy a question of philosophy i would say even in competitive free diving it's not acceptable to black out or to hurt yes. your lungs okay so, so you, you have do to go step by step and consciously decide make your decisions where can i go without hurting myself would you have some warnings during your dive that uh, you are doing something differently you think at that level they know themselves uh, so well that they know that it's going to happen that they might black out on that dive that there's a hu that there's a whole science behind it and training theory about it in the end i think it comes down how what's your attitude towards um your competitive competitive dives is it like uh, do or die or is it I know exactly what I'm, what I can pull off here safely, and I don't mind if I don't may I get a yeah. new role. I'll, I'll do it another day. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't uh, encourage the, the do or die attitude. Right. Yeah, and you know, I guess that's why you do see the accidents every now and again, and some people don't see it that way. They're like, "Oh, I'm going to do it, yes. or I'm going to die." So. Day. You're not going to die yeah. in free diving, right. but there, there are safety procedures in place. You, you, there, there must be a huge chain of, of incidences until you actually have an mm -hmm. accident. Right. But when I say do or die, it means you black out yeah. in water right. and you would die if, no if nobody is there. Someone there. And that's yeah. for me not an acceptable exactly. outcome. Right. But there was a guy um, last year, I guess, an uh, Irish guy there in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a safety diver, I believe. Yeah. He was the one that died. Was the safety yes. diver. Um, I cannot say much about that case because um, I just read one report about it and it's it's an absolute tragedy. He was the most experienced um, safety diver in uh, competitive free diving and it's I can only guess what went right. wrong. I guess there was in the whole design already something of, of that attempt, which was not a competition, it was a, it was sort of like a a, a stunt. Right, which is an quite Instagram popular thing. free diving. Yeah. Um, well, it's achievable, it's doable, people did it, and um, some things just went wrong in a, in a way that uh, was probably the first time how it went wrong, and that's the, the most tragic way to learn. Yeah, when, uh, right. When something happens for the first time, and then we um, have to sort of learn from that, yeah. which is absolutely not what I intend to do, what I'm ready to do, that to wait for things, to tragedies to happen like that. I want to see us developing, adapting, growing, changing the rules before uh, uh, as you said, go the difference wrong. between what you're doing with the recreational and these guys that are the, the comp uh, competition people, uh, much it different. Much you different. are in the position right there to actually train people to not do this, right? You're like, uh, that's what you want to do. Like in recreational, mm -hmm. first uh, you emphasize about safety. And that's why the safety record in uh, recreational freediving is probably very high. 
right? Absolutely. It's a, it's a very the, safe spot. The whole education system of freediving, recreation freediving, is a safety training for every level. Exactly. There, it, it's basically not more than that. I, of course, I can take um, re, uh, care of how we teach in my school uh, on Gilier, uh, to to get this safety standard as high up as possible. But the privilege is that I'm also part of the Education Commission of AIDA. So that's the worldwide agency uh, in the development of free diving. And there we can influence how instructors are teaching in general, worldwide. So that's where we actually have the greatest impact. Right. Um, that to make free diving safe and safe and you were right when you when you assumed that in recreational free diving it we have a great safety record but we can always improve we know about things that of could course. happen that didn't happen yet but if yeah, they so would happen constantly evolving yeah. absolutely the like on a yeah. basically six months loop we are now to to um issue updates right and we, it, we learned so quickly now that uh the industry of free diving is growing and growing and more data is coming in more interesting very capable instructors are giving us feedback which is great stuff and uh, that's our job to keep um, yeah, up with all this this right. flood of information yeah, yeah exactly but that's the fun of it as yeah well. you certainly guys are making a great job and uh, on a discipline that is so attractive I yeah think to, growing, to everyone massively growing. that loves water for sure. Absolutely. And do you have like a team or a, uh, do you teach any professional people or, or, or things like that? So you, you we're talking about the, the, the recreational, but do you teach any professionals? No, not uh, that's not where I am um, really. I don't have that background. I have oh, a okay. background as an athlete, but that was uh, uh, indoor sports and right. that doesn't qualify in free diving. I understand these principles, but uh, I, I know there's people out there They do uh, amazing job doing that however when we talk about professional um, it's not only free diving professionals that benefit from from uh, what we teach what i'm doing more and more is actually teaching sports people but also business development for example that's where i come from as a, a psychologist mm -hmm. um, to teach or you know, to use the techniques that we teach breathing technique relaxation technique self-awareness uh, and so on in, for example, a karate club in Switzerland, uh, okay, yeah, a yeah. handball club, yep. uh, ice hockey, a f uh, football slash soccer team and so on. And that's amazing what we can achieve there with uh, repeated uh, workshops like every six months right. we meet when I'm in Europe, do another round of workshop. And it's really interesting to work with motivated trainers there right. that then work with their with teams. With their athletes. And the same happens in the business. Um, community that when I work with uh, managers uh, on their self-awareness, uh, the, the, the tension in the belly that we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that simple awareness is very hard to achieve, but it has a huge effect if you get it. And that's just one example of okay. what yeah, you can do definitely see that. Um, if you are in a difficult situation to center yourself, calm yourself down, be aware of your state of are you nervous or not, right. that then changes the whole situation. Interesting. All right. Tell us a little bit about uh, your school in Gilier. Let's get back there for a moment and uh, tell us how many staff you have there uh, and uh, best time to come uh, during the year. Yeah, all year. That's uh, that's why. That's we what we were there. saying yeah, before. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, every every season has its uh, perks. Um, so dry season, there's more people. Or dry season means between uh, mm -hmm. or high season between June and October. More people on the island, but uh, maybe the there's no chance of rain um, in the school it doesn't make a big difference we are not seasonal that's a thing that I had to learn that we get a, a steady stream of people that are on the island but for the school not a big difference if it's high season or low season um, best time is of course uh, to come not in high season because mm -hmm. then you have yeah, lower prices and, uh, uh, and also like uh, if there are so a bit less people yeah. I have more time to maybe train on my myself ah, there's always time for that there so we have because time. we have enough people there we, there's always a minimum of three instructors um, uh, that that can do courses then we have mostly um, assisting guys that are in master training or so there, there's always someone there that can help you in your tailored training be it you want to do a full course maybe you just want to train so we will have more of course one or two instructors more for high season um, 
but the goal is that everybody has sort of like a, a relaxed time that you don't have to mm -hmm. work over time and so on. So everybody gets uh, instructor attention. Absolutely. Very if you want that, you know, attention. you can you can choose. People come to us. They are certified free divers. That's the same like in scuba diving. Now they come to us. Hey, I'm a certified guy. I just want to train, do this and that. I'm fine. I just need equipment, this and that. Good. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I right. just go for fun too. Yeah. Okay. And uh, are you also organizing traveling across Indonesia for uh, groups? Um, not well, groups, yes. When we do liverboards again next year. So this is now a transition year 2018 where I was very busy with uh, establishing free dive flow as a school. Now I can uh, have more and more time to go back to liverboards, Komodo, and. Uh, Raja Ampat is still the, the and, holy uh, rail to go. Tell us uh, what is uh, a typical day on a free diving uh, liveaboard. What would you do uh, from morning to evening? Dive, eat, sleep, repeat. <laughs> okay, it's pretty much similar <laughs> same, to the scuba diving. Same as the scuba diving. But we only do it two times. You do two times yeah, by longer session, times. I guess. The sessions are usually much longer and you have your own boat. So you just drift around, right, have yeah, fun yeah. and... Uh, then we're two times per day is f is really enough so the rest of the day we use for um, either it's 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 some just discussions or normally the the instructor uh, or whoever is there maybe you have we have interesting guests will give a, a short presentation maybe mm -hmm. half yep. half an hour of a presentation about the topic like maybe a encounter with uh, humpback whales on another trip or how we can improve your um your your bottom time as a free diver just have an interesting talk or like initiate the talk and yep. then of course the talk will go on over oh dinner yeah, and over all and night over. long until do you also do some uh, relaxation sessions coached yeah. We yeah we, well on the boat and uh, all the time that that is an integral thing there's always warm up and there is always um, when we see someone has a a issue with calming down then th yeah we work on that straight away like okay. relaxation so there is always is a chance to technique. get a little bit of coaching absolutely yeah? we that's that's, that's the goal that you basically have fun and still improve as a free diver without feeling like you are in a training camp or so. In some of the best destinations in the of world. Oh, well, yeah. Raja Ampat. Raja Ampat, Komodo. Yeah. Like that. And the second project that I'm working on now is, uh, well, we are close to a diving paradise here all around us, you know, um, Bali and especially what I see for free diving is Lembongan, like, or mm -hmm. let's say, Chenningan, Lembongan, yep. Penida, um, in general, like, for everything a free diver could wish for is over there. It's over there, yeah. So that's definitely going to be a destination for fun free diving that we will have on offer already this year. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. So be ready for you, fun free divers, uh, to in join some fun dive trips uh, in Lembongan but with the uh, free dive floor. Only if you want to free dive with mantas and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah only no, if you want to free dive. Stuff you don't want to see. Crystal yeah. clear yeah. water. Yeah. And if you don't care for that, then no, yes. don't come then here. Then no. all of a sudden you turn around and you have a mola mola staring at you. Oh, the holy grail of free diving. <laughs> that is a project. F see and take a, f a selfie with a mola mola. That would be pretty cool. Now we have to put in a picture of a mola mola. Yeah, yeah we do have. Yeah. Ding, as you did like that, it yeah. just appeared. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of pictures, uh, you've Sorry. brought together a, a short presentation uh, that shows your your dive center or your free diving center there in the Gillies. Um, so I think what we can do is we can we can roll out with that. Thank you uh, for for coming in and, and speaking to us. Absolute we've, pleasure. Uh, Thanks for having me. We've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Oh, yes. I don't know if you've learned. It was something. very very I interesting. And uh, thanks a lot for joining. Cool. Good luck to you as well, guys. And uh, we'll, we'll 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 put that video on. We'll we'll throw your website up there one more time here. And uh, thanks for coming in. Excellent. My pleasure. Thank you. That's Bye. it for today.
Feeling 